every time I spin the wheel for Joan Prime, people stop in the stream and they ask, do I need to expertise this commander or not? And so today I thought I'd make a dedicated video exploring this topic in depth. Should you expertise Joan Prime? What are the good skill breakpoints that you should hunt for? And what other commanders might be a better use of your sculptures? Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And I wanted to get a look at Joan Prime because of all of your feedback in my live streams. And by the way, if you haven't already subscribed, I usually stream multiple times per week, and I've got over 1,700 videos dedicated to making you a better player in Rise of Kingdoms. Now, Joan Prime is a commander that people are thinking about skipping the expertise on because her expertise doesn't look all that impressive. And I want you to think again, because I think this is still a really good expertise skill. But before I talk about Joan Prime's expertise skill specifically, I want to show you some commanders where you absolutely had to get the expertise skill and some commanders where you really could skip it and it was not worth all that much. So we have a great thing to compare to. So let's first look at Boudicca Prime, who I will argue you really want to get her expertise skill. This is because it unlocks a brand new capability on the commander. It makes it so that when she's hit with a control effect, like a silence from Guan Yu, she has an 80% chance of just shedding the effect entirely. It transforms the way that this commander can be used and opens up a brand new pairing that's very powerful, and that is Boudicca with Artemisia. This is just one example of an expertise skill that is really transformative. On the flip side of things, when we look at expertise skills that are not very transformative, let's go get a look at Leonidas, who you know, hey, that's a commander I really like, but his expertise skill makes it so that when you drop below 10% of units remaining, you deal 400% increased damage and take 50% less damage for 10 seconds. Now, in the open field, which is what most of us are doing, we should never aspire to get ourselves into this situation. So most of the time, for most people, his expertise skill is not all that relevant. Or for example, on Guan Yu, for a very long time, his expertise skill was fine, but not amazing. It makes it so that whenever you gain a shielding effect, he gets 15% extra skill damage. Well, until Skippy Prime was introduced into the game, there were not a lot of ways that you'd be getting shields on a Guan Yu. A lot of people would go out of their way to put a lucky coin on Guan, which is not that great of an accessory to put on a Guan anyways. The rest of his expertise skill gives you a little bit of march speed when you leave a structure. I mean, it's not bad, but a lot of people would say, hey, you could skip this expertise skill and you could instead go for a 5 one five, five, Try to save some sculptures here, okay? So now when we look at Joan of Arc, we have to ask the question, is this the sort of expertise skill that we really can skip? And I would say, sort of, but not really, okay? And why is that? Her expertise skill gives you 5% more counterattack damage, and when the target troop has more than 30% of units remaining, which for most fights, for the most important parts of the fights, they've got more than 30% of units remaining, you deal 5% more damage. And I wanted to make this comparable to something else that you would sort of understand, which is an accessory, the Ring of Doom. Now, when you do the math on how much damage this accessory adds, people have told me it's about 5.5%, just under 5.5% anyways, extra damage. Well, let's think about that for a second. The expertise skill on... Joan of Arc Prime is kind of like another Ring of Doom worth of power. I know it doesn't exactly work that way. They're not the same thing. But the average damage granted by a Ring of Doom is about 5.5%. And the expertise skill on Joan Prime is giving you about 5% more damage and also a little bit of counterattack. So, you know, average it out. It's about 5.5% more damage. So I think a Ring of Doom is a pretty nice thing to throw onto a commander. So... There is value that you are getting from this expertise skill. Now, it is not changing the way the commander performs. It just makes them even better. And I think this is why Joan Prime is a commander that a lot of people have been really interested in. You don't have to put all of the sculptures on her in order to get really great results. But there's more. Because, you see, we're not really talking about 
putting the last 80 sculptures onto there to unlock the expertise skill, there is some skill that you'd have to have less than max in order to have her not expertise, right? So you might go for a 5515 or a 5115, for example, skipping either the second or the third skill or both skills potentially. This is really important to understand too because both of these skills are actually really good. They're both very strong. If we look at what they do, if you just have them at one point of skill versus five point of skills, okay? The first skill here is going from 5% attack to 20% attack. That's a 15% attack boost. Now, what gives you about 15% of attack? Well, if you look at the set weapon, it's giving 20%. So it'll be an over-exaggeration to say it's like a set weapon worth of stats, but I think the idea kind of carries here. It's a lot of stats. 15% is meaningful. It's like a really solid piece of equipment worth of extra stats. Plus, you're getting a bunch of extra march speed on that second skill as well if you take it from level 1 to level 5. You're looking at an increase of about 8% all, everywhere you go and an additional 8%, okay, when you're outside of Alliance territory. That's like three of the blue flag accessories worth of extra march speed. Do you see where I'm going with this? So you've got like a set weapon worth of stats almost, and you've got three Call of the Loyals worth of march speed. And on top of all that, the second skill is increasing your normal attack damage. You're going from 1% to 5%. Well, okay, you know what that's equivalent to? That's equivalent to a greatest glory worth of stats. The greatest glory, we get a look at that accessory, okay? That gives you 5%. Normal attack damage boost. Okay, so 4% of boost is what you get going from 1 point to 5 points of skill uh, in that particular skill. But you see what I'm trying to say. The second skill on Joan of Arc is giving you a lot. And I'm mentioning this because there are commanders we've looked at where the skills aren't giving you a lot. A part of the reason you don't expertise Guan is because the second skill, most people are not swarming garrisons. They don't care about it at all. So they didn't care about the expertise. They didn't care about the second skill. Or, for example, we can get a look at William, another cavalry commander. This is really a great comparison point. The skill that everybody skips out on is the fourth skill, okay? Because at the base level of this skill, it's giving your march 10% defense. And if you hit a target with your AoE damage, then it gives all of your nearby marches, well, five of them anyways, uh, a 10% defense boost as well, and 50 rage per second. And to take this skill to the max level, the only thing that's changing is it's a 10% defense boost to a 20% defense boost. I mean, it's really, really small. It's a very incremental upgrade to the amount of power that you're actually getting. And the expertise skill is doing a small amount of extra damage factor on your instant proc damage. So why am I trying to compare to William? Because... Unlike other commanders, okay, where the gain is really incremental or irrelevant on one of these skills, I'm trying to show you that on Joan Prime, every skill is actually really good. And people look at this third skill, and this I will argue and agree is the least important skill on Joan Prime. If you're going to take Joan Prime um, to some something less than maxed but still pumping it up, 5515 five, is ideally what I, what I think you would shoot for. But this third skill is going to increase your cavalry damage by 5% when it's maxed. Well, 5% damage, we just talked about how that's like a ring of doom worth of extra punch. Okay, you're only getting 4% here, but the idea kind of carries. that There's still a lot of punch in this skill over here. Plus, there's this periodic normal attack boost. So I did a little bit of really rough napkin math here, but it's a little bit less than a greatest glory worth of extra normal attack averaged out over time from this little boost you get when you use an active skill. All that to say that when you compare these skills to things that you are familiar with, accessories and equipment, Joan Prime and every skill on her actually looks really good. And what I like about the design of this commander is that you get incremental punch as you start to power her up, leading up to her expertise skill, which means you can use her really early, 
even when she's unmaxed. So the earliest that I think you ought to hunt for using a Joan of Arc Prime is 5115. And that is because this last skill is just completely insane. Having your active skill fire off all over again is just really powerful, especially because it is such a powerful buff from Joan Prime. And I'm not really going to tell you that you could use this commander, okay? Less than a 5115. But I will point out the weirdness of probabilities and randomness is that if you had her only 5111, sometimes you'll just get really lucky and you'll win the dice roll on the 50% chance of getting your skill to fire off all over again. And you won't notice all that much of a difference from a 5111 to a 5115. The reality is, however, that you get a pretty sizable average damage boost, and we can't count on actually being lucky. So 5115 is, I think, where you want to land with Joan Prime, and I think she's a solid commander to expertise. The only question then becomes, do you have enough sculptures to do it? And I think waiting and running the Wheel of Fortune as much as you can, if you're not in a KVK, to be very patient is a solid strategy. We know that at some point, ranged commanders are going to come into the game, and they're probably going to be powerful because I don't know why they would release something completely underwhelming into the game. I doubt that is the goal that the developers would have. So you want to have some amount of sculptures on hand. And if you're thinking, man, just cool, I have a bunch of unmaxed commanders. You're telling me that Joan is somebody I should work on, but is there someone else I should work on more? I would say probably there are other commanders that you could work on more that either have some really big effect when they have their expertise skill or are a commander that other people consider to potentially be better. As an example, on multiple occasions in my live stream, I've polled you all to see between Joan Prime and Nevsky, and the majority of people say Nevsky is the better commander. And that's about 75 to 80% of people advocating for Nevsky over Joan. So in some ways, if you were to pick one of these commanders you're going to expertise, then probably the commander I would steer you toward is Nevsky because his skills also are really powerful and his expertise skill is also really solid. Troops led by this commander deal 5% increased normal attack damage. Okay, that's a greatest glory worth of effectiveness there. And he gets a 10% chance to increase his cavalry health by 30% for three seconds when he's being attacked, can only trigger once every five seconds. So I would say there probably are more pressing projects than the Joan Prime, but just remember when you think about Joan Prime, she is still a good commander to expertise and her expertise skill is still really valuable. And once we compare it to like, oh gee, it's like a kind of like getting an extra ring of doom or the punchiness on the commander, it starts to look, I think, a lot more attractive. The final thing I wanted to highlight in this video is that the developers have really overtuned this commander for being good in the open field, and it comes at the cost of her effectiveness to swarm a garrison, and allow me to explain. They've pushed on things like area of effect damage and buffing abilities and also normal attack damage, and those things don't actually help you as much when you swarm a garrison. Obviously, the AoE damage and buffing can be good, but there's a lot of problems with AoE buffs when you're swarming a garrison. You don't even know if one of the marches that's attacking the garrison is going to get the buff or somebody else standing by. And obviously, AoE damage only sort of matters for hitting a garrison. You might hit a reinforcing march, but you're probably going to have a lot of wasted damage. Similarly, the normal attack damage boosts that you see on the second skill, on the third skill, sure, it influences the damage you deal, to something you're targeting, but the garrison you're swarming is not targeting you, which means you only get some of the effectiveness of this when you swarm a garrison. And this expertise skill, when it comes to swarming a garrison, it should be probably below 30% of units remaining when you start swarming it, so you're not even really getting the benefit of this anyways. Plus, there's some other skill that says when you're attacking troops. I think that's uh, right over here on the third skill. So all that to say... This commander is overtuned for effectiveness in the open field at the cost of other things. And for most people, you don't really care about those other costs. This is a solid open fielder. I plan to expertise this commander in the coming weeks on my main account. And I also plan to expertise her on my restart account, probably when the next wheel comes around. 
So if you don't want to miss when that happens, consider subscribing to the channel. If you're looking for talents on your Joan Prime, there'll be a card in the end screen that's going to show up right over here. And if you can't decide whether to run Joan Prime as the primary commander or the secondary commander, I'll have another card right up over here that focuses in a little bit more on commander pairings.